Hey guys, welcome back to another episode in my tips and strategies. And guys, I think this is going to be the last video that I put up, at least for a while. Um, this is my 25th episode, and the truth is, there's only so many videos you can kind of put up about tips and strategies and sort of the way that I play and you know how I approach the game. And it's just it's kind of to a point where it's like, you know, I've said it all. And, you know, at some point I'm going to be done. So I'm, I may transfer over and, and do some other types of videos and whatnot. So we'll see. But um, if you're seeing this, you know, I appreciate you watching it as well as my other videos. And um, I've really enjoyed making them. And so it this is kind of a unique game compared to all the other games and videos that I've put up. And um, the kind of the key thing for this game to, to watch and to focus is the fact that Everybody in this game played just fantastic. Uh, people in this game, man, they were making such good decisions throughout the game. And that's what I'm actually going to focus on through the game is watching decisions that people make, why they make decisions. And, and the, kind of the lesson to learn is it doesn't matter if you make all the right decisions, there's still only going to be one winner at the end. So, you know, that's the thing to kind of take away is, you know, making good decisions puts you in contention to get to the end. It just doesn't guarantee a chicken dinner. And so anyway, um, I'm actually recording this separately from uh, the gameplay that I recorded earlier. So we're going to transition over into the game. So just to kind of tell you sort of what happens from here. Uh, I had dropped right to here. I move up uh, over here to Monte Nuevo, um, hit these buildings, then I hit these buildings. I uh, go over to here, I hit these buildings, then I move out on foot, and then I take off um, running up to San Martin and I get into a van. And that's basically where we're going to jump into the game. So um, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching these videos, and uh, I appreciate it. So let's go ahead and just jump into the game. And we will see what's going on with me. And so first other person I kind of want to look at who um, did something really good uh, is this guy right over here. This is Die Guy. Now, Die Guy... Uh, is currently, I forget where he was running from. I mean, he's running in this direction, so he's coming basically from the area of San Martin, but where exactly he was coming, I, you know, I'm really not too sure. Um, and he ends up encountering this guy right here, Protagonist. Now, Protagonist is on a motorcycle. I don't fault the guy for being on a motorcycle. I try not to get on the motorcycles uh, if I can, and half the reason is because of what happens. Because when you're on a motorcycle, it's easy to get taken off. And boom, guy goes down. He goes down right there. So die guy comes over to raid him. All of a sudden, he sees me coming. He, he's smart. He goes for cover real quick. And I started honking at him. I can't really hear it from there, but he's trying to sight me in. He's trying to, he's trying to get me down. So... Uh, we're going to kind of look at uh, where the circle is. So I'm coming from over here in San Martin, and I'm going to kind of talk about where it is that I was trying to go and why I was trying to get there. But the reason it was such a good move for Die Guy, because uh, he's looting somewhere over here where the guy's uh, crate was, he runs over here. The reason he did that was because he didn't want me to veer over and to basically run him over. That's a really good decision. The guy's smart enough to realize, like, I've got a chance to get this guy down in the van, but at the end of the day, if I don't, I don't want to basically have this guy run me over. So he makes that good decision. So, you know, I give credit where credit's due. It was a good decision. So there was a couple other guys over in this area, and what I end up doing is I go ahead and I go off the road a little bit and what I am doing, I'm not trying to go cross country with the van. What I'm trying to do is to actually come back over and to get onto this road. Uh, I kind of missed my turn and um, so I come back over. Now here's the thing, you never ever ever want to get out of your vehicle over in this area between, uh, between Minas General and the graveyard. Uh, the reason if you get out here, I call it, you know, it's like a death valley. Uh, you're going to get sniped. You're going to get taken out. So even though I'm going 
as slow as a snail, I still finally get to the top of the hill and I work my way down. Now, the other reason is if you're coming in this direction, there's so many places for people to be uh, right over here and it's easy for you to get taken out, especially if you're on foot. So the decision I make, I miss my turn again actually. Um, I, what I meant to do was to come down this road and what I wanted to do was to come over into this area. So what I end up doing is going down <laughs> the road a little bit and then I am smart enough to like, okay, I'm an idiot. Let's get back up to where it is I'm, I'm trying to get to. So we're down to 29 people. Now, this is a pretty small circle for 29 people at this point. I mean, we'll thin the herd down a little bit. Um, but the reason I was trying to get right to here is I knew that there was a good chance that, you know, there's no buildings in this area, there's, there's nothing really here, that there's a good chance that I can actually get out of my vehicle, not take any shots from anyone because no one will be here, and I'll at least have like a couple moments where I can move it on foot and I can kind of figure out where it is I want to go look for some cover, et cetera, et cetera. Now it's a wide open area, but that doesn't mean a wide open area doesn't have any cover. So I get over to this and then all of a sudden uh, I hear a, a muscle car coming. It is this guy Ronan. So I get down, I'm trying to see where this guy is ending up and he ends up coming over here and ditching the muscle car. So I move over to engage this guy. All of a sudden I hear a motorcycle coming, so I kind of pause just to see like where this guy's coming from, and it is Die Guy, by the way, the guy we saw earlier. And so what I do is I move over and I get down into this bush. Now the reason I get into this bush is because it is cover, not easily seen, and my idea, what I thought might happen, was Ronan was going to kind of work his way up here, and he was going to go into this shed, and when he got into the shed, he might stop. And when he stops, that's when I will basically engage this guy. Um, that's not what happens. Instead of stopping, the guy runs in there, um, takes the painkillers, and then he just goes ahead and keeps running, and he takes off running. Now, I say that this is a good decision because... The way that I play the game is I'm not looking to get into the fight unless I have the advantage. Now, technically, I've got the advantage at the moment because I've got this guy sighted down. I see where he is. I have an opportunity to take a shot, but I don't have enough of an advantage where I think I can get this guy down without really taking fire back. And I'm also not sure who else is around me at the moment. So when he doesn't stop, I go ahead and I let him continue because I want to see if there's anybody else who's coming up. And then I can hear another vehicle right over there slamming Psycho. And so I look back just to see if Ronan is anywhere right in my line of sight. And he's not, so I say, okay, I don't need to engage this guy right now. I can wait a little bit and then maybe I'll get another opportunity uh, in case this guy's really close to me. So from here, I can actually hear Die Guy. He is firing his weapon. I can't remember who he's shooting at. He is shooting at Slammin' Psycho. And so we've got uh, a bunch of people. We're down to 26 people. We have an encounter right here. Die Guy goes down to Caboose. And there's another fight going over here. So, like I said, there's a lot of people in this area. And this also sort of made an impact on me in what I was going to do. So, St. Dog was fighting Caboose. Um, these two kind of get into another f fight. He's not able to get him down. We've got another guy back here. Six Sandwich. I love everybody's names. We even have Potato Leaf over there. So there's a lot of sort of chaos that's going around me at the moment. And so there is, let's just kind of see how much time is left. Okay, so the circle's coming in at this point. So when the circle's coming in, I'm still just kind of allowing some of these guys to get taken out. And what I know the whole time is like, okay, I've got a muscle car that's right next to me. So I'm going to have the ability to go get into the muscle car if I need to. So I just kind of wanted to see where the um, next circle was going to be and then make a decision based off of that. 
So here's the next circle, it comes in and I can see this distance. Now here's what I know. I know that there is a ton of people still around me. They're to the north of me, they're to the south of me, and they are to the west of me. So that means the problem I'm gonna run into is it doesn't matter the direction I run to try to get to the circle, I'm gonna have people who are behind me. When you have people behind you, it's pretty easy to basically get shot in the back. So what I want to do at this point is make a good decision and I'm going to just basically wait here until the clock ticks down and then I'm going to go over and I'm going to get into the muscle car and the place that I wanted to get to was to hit the road come all the way down here and then come up from this angle the reason was because I thought there was going to be less people on that side of the circle and it would be easier for me to get into the circle so that's the plan that's what I plan on doing so time's ticking away Still tons of chaos kind of going around and everything. Do, 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 do. I wish we could kind of focus on a lot of people this game. I can't, I can't make the video two hours long. So at about the 30 second mark, I take off and I get into the car. So we're going to kind of look at something that happens up the road ahead just to kind of make you aware. And someone could try to argue that this is a mistake and I don't think it is. So we've got a guy right here, Toasteru. Now he's crossing the road and, and moving into this building over here, but there's a guy on, uh, I think it's Six Sandwich, uh, who is in a dune buggy. Yeah, it is Sandwich. Okay, so Toasteru's running in there. All of a sudden, here's the dune buggy, and so he knows um, someone's coming. So he runs to the window, can't get a shot, so he runs out the front door and... He sees where this guy's going, so he starts to run him, he starts to trail him. Now, here's the thing. I'm coming along in a muscle car. Toasteru is out in the open. There really is not much that you can do at this point when you're out in the open and there is no cover for you to get to. So this guy kind of does the only thing, the only option he's got, which is to go ahead and try to engage me. The problem is, when you're trying to engage somebody who's in a muscle car they are going too fast it's going to be really difficult to basically get them down so what ends up happening unfortunately for toasteru i'm coming along i see the guy and i take him out so he gone so i go ahead and i continue up uh my direction and I get to just outside the circle and I stop, get out, and kind of run back and make sure I get up to the circle so I'm not going to run or I'm not going to take any damage and that's pretty much that. So, excuse me, we're going to go look at something else that is happening over on this side. Now we've got a guy right here, D&D &D lives within and he is scoping out Potato Leaf and we've got shock blade over here. Now, what ends up happening is D and D ends up getting into a fight with Potato Leaf. Uh, and D and D does a good job in kind of fighting with this guy. But what ends up happening is shock blade is on the other side. He starts moving in. He hears the shots uh, between Potato Leaf and D and D, and so. Shockblade moves over and Potato Leaf doesn't see him because he's behind him and uh, Shockblade ends up sniping him and he gets the guy down. But this is where D&D &D makes a really, really good decision. Boom, boom. And even though he was working on uh, Potato and getting him down, he doesn't get him down. And so now D&D &D ends up seeing Shockblade. And so he sees, he knows that D&D uh, &D knows that he didn't get Potato down, so he knows that Shockblade's the one who did it. Now he sees him, he starts to fire at him. But here's where he makes the great decision. He does not continue the engagement. He breaks it off. The reason he breaks it off is there's a minute, 10 seconds to go. Look at the distance that D&D &D has to travel. Look at the distance that Shockblade has to travel. The, the brilliant decision that D&D &D makes is like, all right, I'm not going to continue to fight this guy 
because I don't know how long this fight is going to take. And I know that I've got to travel a pretty big distance and I know that the damage I'm gonna take from the blue zone is going to be too much. So I know where this guy is. I know the direction that he has to go because he doesn't have a choice. I'm going to get another opportunity to engage this guy. This is a great decision. This is honestly, like this is a great decision that D&D makes. So go ahead and kind of get up to here and we're going to look at a little bit of a mistake. It's not the worst possible decision, um, but it's it, it could have been a little bit better of a decision. So we've got two guys over here. We've got AK Pancakes, and we've got a guy up here at the top, a guy named Outside. So Outside is up here uh, in this warehouse, and we've got AK Pancakes right here. Now, I'm working my way up from the side over here. What I end up doing is I get over to this side of the fence and I start moving my way in. Pancakes hears me. He knows that I'm coming. And the mistake that he kind of makes is he could have picked a better spot to start engaging me. Because what he's doing at the moment is he's healing up. He's taking some first aid or some painkillers. And he doesn't see me initially. When he finally sees me... He's having to shoot through the fence, and he's hitting the fence, he's hitting the post, and so that's sort of the problem is some of his bullets, you know, basically don't find their mark. So I know where this guy's going to end up being. He's going to rush out this side, so I go ahead and kind of rush the guy, and I'm able to get him down. The problem is that all of a sudden outside sees me from the top up there. He sees me, he starts firing, I take some damage, it's not enough to get me down, so I go ahead and I heal up all the way. But I've run into a problem at this point. He even chucks a Molotov cocktail in my direction. Doesn't doesn't get near me. This guy ends up seeing me move over in this direction. Takes some more shots, but he doesn't get me down. And look at where I'm at and look at where it is that I need to go. And there's basically uh, no time left. Like, I've got to get going, so I'm trying to scope it out. But here comes the circle. Now, right at that moment, I heard the dune buggy. When I hear the dune buggy, I know that this guy is no longer looking for me. He's in a vehicle. The only thing I'm worried about now is getting up to the circle and having this guy ahead of me getting out of the vehicle and shooting me. But instead of that, this guy actually moves all the way over here, goes off the cliff face, and comes over to the other side. Now, long story short, I make it to the circle. Um, I make it and I am safe. So we're going to kind of move our attention over to the other side of the uh, other side of the circle. And we're going to look at a guy named King Aslan, who apparently is a big fan of the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And so Aslan was actually shooting it outside uh, in the vehicle. And after this, he diverts his attention over to a guy down below him named K1 from the Seven. So he ends up seeing K1, gets some nice shots, but he doesn't get the guy down. K1 moves over, takes his time and gets a headshot on the guy and that is the end of <laughs> that's the end as his body goes rolling down the hill there so k1 did a great job in basically getting that uh headshot so now he's working his way back to where he just was uh what he doesn't know is that outside is right there on his left he hears those shots gets out the um Gets out his automatic gun, boom, all of a sudden he gets the guy down. So it's the end of outside, and we're now down to six players. And so we're going to kind of look at a guy right here. D&D &D lives within in Shockblade, and I am now over on this side. So I'm hearing some of the chaos that's going on. Uh, we're down to six people, and I know that there's no one immediately with me. Now, I look at the circle, and I realize, like, okay, I'm, I'm not in bad shape because I'm going to be able to get to sort of this ledge right here, and I'm still going to be in the circle. I don't need to go down into the valley. And here's something else that I want to say about everyone who was... Everyone left on the map, and even the guys who, like, had just died. Everyone had made a really good decision. They knew 
do not get down into this valley. Like every single person, even when we're like at 10 people and 11 people, no one was stupid enough to get down into this valley. Because if you get down in here right now, you're a dead man. There is no way you're getting out of it. This is the worst place you could possibly be at the moment because you're going to have so many people who are up on both sides of the ledges. There's no way you're going to have cover from guys who are at that height. So every single person left has made a really good decision not to get down into the valley floor just yet. So I end up hearing... Um, I can't remember who takes out Slam and Psycho. I think it's D and D, but I can't remember. Uh, yeah, it is. So he gets Slam and Psycho down, and now this guy takes off running. And the reason he's running over here is D and D remembers that there's a guy who was over here, Shockblade, that he didn't get to get into a fight with earlier, and so he's moving over here to kind of see if Shockblade is in this area. I've heard these shots. Now I get up and I actually see uh, where D and D is, and so I go ahead and I start to scope in D and D, and I see this guy, and the guy stops, gets down. I take a shot. I think I get a headshot on him, but it's not enough to get him down. That was a good shot. Uh, it's not enough to get him down, and all of a sudden. Boom, I see D&D &D go down, and so now here's what I know. I know that there is somebody else right over there because I'm not the one that got D&D &D down. So Shockblade, I know where he is now, so I know that I've got a guy right over there. So after this, I end up turning my attention, and I start looking across the valley because I realize that there's still going to be people across the valley, and I've got a little bit of an advantage so I see this guy, all of a sudden I hear it's a car 98, so now I'm a little bit concerned. So I take some shots at K1 from the 7, and then I move over because I'm trying to get out of his line of sight. Now at this moment, there's another guy over here, Super Nam, and he says, you know what, screw it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get down into the valley because I know this is where I basically need to be. Now for myself and Shockblade over on this side, we don't have to get down into the valley. We've got some ledges that we can basically get to. But the problem for K1 and for Super Nam is um, there's really no place that they can get to. It's more of an open face area. So this guy's got to go ahead, get down into the circle, and try to get to some cover. So K1, really smart play. He realizes, you know what? I'm running out of time. There's only three seconds before the circle comes in. I'm going to go ahead and get down now because he was engaging me, but now he knows that the fun time's over. We got to move. Got to get down to the circle. All of a sudden, he takes a shot from Super Nam. He's trying to scope this guy in with the car 98. Chuck's a, a, a grenade. And that's his only grenade, and that ends up making a difference here in a second. Takes that damage, comes down. Doo, doo, doo. So he's got his AKM out, and right there, something happens. Shock Blade is up over here, and this is the problem when you move down into the valley. You can ha it doesn't matter where you go, if anyone's up on the ledges, they are going to have a really good angle on you. So Shockblade ends up getting Super Nam down, and so what I am currently doing is I'm working my way over to here. Now, I put myself in a great position because I know that Shockblade just took out somebody, we're down to three people, and now I hear these more gunshots, and what I say to myself is, if Shockblade ends up getting the other guy down, all I have to do is stand up, and boom, I get to take this guy out. That doesn't happen, because K1 from the 7 is a really, really good player, and he is a really good shot. And so he goes ahead, heals up a little bit, and he gets out his car 98, leans over, leans into a shot, sees the guy, takes his time and boom he gets him down so that was a beautiful beautiful shot so right then and there uh it's now down to heads up and now it's like for me it's like okay crap 
Um, the easy kill is gone. Now I'm going to have to engage the guy that's across the way. Now, this guy is not 100% sure where I'm at. Now, there's a part of him, I think, why he, he starts to move over into this direction. I think part of the reason he was doing that was because when he was engaging me earlier, all of a sudden, you know, he loses track of me, and then he ends up taking out somebody who's right over here. I think what he thought was that the guy that he was engaging earlier is the one that he just got down. So what this guy does is he's kind of looking over in this direction, and he does something that's really, really smart. This is another really good decision. Um, there's a delayed reaction there. I was not taking a shot at him. So... K1 says, screw this, I'm not hanging out down here in the valley, I'm moving back uphill. Even though there's not a ton of cover, I want to get elevated because I don't want to be in a position where this guy can basically shoot down on me. I want to get up a little bit and see what I can see. So what ends up happening is he moves over here, he's trying to scope it out, and we'll look at it from my perspective. I realize, you know that I've basically got, you know, 50 seconds at this point. So this is a ton of time. And this is something else that um, myself and K1 did really well. We, we used the clock really well. We both know where we have to end up, but we go ahead and kind of use the clock. We're taking our time. We're scoping down. We're trying to find one another. And I move up to the ledge and I'm I'm taking my time because there's no reason for me to rush. I'm looking at all the places where this guy might be. And eventually I get up here and I look to the left and I end up seeing this guy. And eventually I do. So I kind of keep moving, keep moving. All of a sudden I see movement over on my left. And that's when I see the guy. So now I see him and I'm ready to take shots. And there's still 15 seconds to go. Now, 15 seconds is an eternity when you're basically getting into a gunfight. So I start firing. As soon as I start firing, this guy realizes, like, crap, he sees me. I don't know where he is. Then he sees me, sights in. And I have to jump down. And I take damage right there. So he keeps firing with the car 98, but then he loses sight of me. Now, something key happens right here. So I realize once I don't have this guy down that, okay, uh, circle's coming in. I basically got to get out from where I'm at. I got to jump down. So I had jumped down from uh, basically being right up here. I take a little bit of uh, damage when I get down. I don't take fall damage, but I take damage when the guy hits me, but it's not enough. I don't take a lot of damage. And so I get down to this spot. Now, when I had gotten down to this spot, this is when I realized, like, okay, th there's really only a couple places for this guy to go that makes sense based on where I just saw him. And the main thing that made sense was going to be this building. So I end up looking um, for this guy. I see movement over on my left. I get some shots, and I do some damage to this guy. And so right here is where I make my final decision and at the moment, I didn't know it was my final decision, but it's like, okay, I'm going to start chucking grenades. Now, this is why it's key. This guy had already used up his last grenade already, because when he was throwing grenades before, after he got done using his grenade, all of a sudden a smoke grenade appeared. So that's how I know he had run out of grenades. Now, this guy makes a great decision. Whenever you've got an opportunity to get to a rock rather than um, like one of these small buildings, it's a better place to be. Because one, you have to look through this window in order to look through this window. That's difficult. If you get to here, you got to peek around the corner and you're really limited in where you can kind of see. Even if he works his way over to this side, it's sort of the same thing. So when you get to the rock, you've got a couple options. You can just stand up and actually see where I'm at. You can move to the right and you can move to the left. And it's just a better place to be. However, Unfortunately for K1, as great as he played, I chuck three grenades, and the first one doesn't do any damage, but he moves right back to where, and my second grenade ends up being the best one, and it's enough to get this guy down. I threw it really well, and I end up getting the chicken dinner from the grenade. So 
Alrighty guys, that's gonna be it for this video, but what I hope you kind of take away from it is some of the really good decisions that people made, and at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many good decisions you make, there's really only ever gonna be, well not really, there is only ever gonna be one winner. So even if you make a bunch of good decisions, doesn't always mean you're gonna get the chicken dinner, but it will put you in contention to get to the end of the game. So major, major props to all the guys who played this game. Everyone that I kind of focused on was making really good decisions throughout the game. So alrighty guys, thanks so much. And uh, I think this is probably going to be the last video that I do for a while because I have now put up 25 of my tips and strategies. And at the end of the day, I don't know how many more tips and strategies I can put up. So at least for the foreseeable future, this is going to be it at the moment but you can always follow me on twitch at offlawn and uh, i would love to guy uh, have you guys jump in there and uh, i'd even love to do duos and squads so definitely look me up and hit me up and you're welcome to hop onto my discord server as well so alrighty guys we'll see you